in a previous video we looked at some of the things that usually do that hurt our kidneys but in this video we are going to look at some of the things that will indicate that you already have a heart kidney or maybe your kidney is failing or bound to fail soon now we all know how important the kidneys are like it helps in cleaning of blood through filtration uh, we have erythropoietin, which is a hormone that helps in a production of red blood cells. We have regulation of fluids through either reabsorption or releasing more, more of that water from your body to regulate the amount of blood volume or maybe the amount of fluids that you have. You have um, activation of vitamin D from its inactive forms to uh, active forms and this will help in um, absorption of something like calcium and phosphorus forming strong bones. We have um, adrenal glands which are usually located on top of the kidneys and they help in uh, production of adrenaline which helps in uh, fright and fight. Let's go to the first one which is edema. Now we have so many factors that can contribute to you having that edema. Uh, being pregnant, taking certain drugs, having venous insufficiencies, so many things. But now, today we're going to look at how kidneys will contribute to you getting that in case it's not working properly. Now remember, one of the functions of the kidneys is to make sure that your blood volume is okay. And this is done through regulating the amount of water that is being retained in that blood. When you have excess of that in your, in your blood, your kidneys will make sure that um, as much of it drains into your bladder and then you get rid of that to remove excess of that water. If you have less of that water in your blood, it will make sure that it retains as much of that water in the body instead of letting them drain through the urine. Now, let's go to when you have excess of that water or maybe your kidneys are not good at uh, removing much of that water from your body. So you're going to have as much of that water as possible in the body. You're not getting rid of that. And this will contribute to you having those conditions whereby you're going to find that uh, Water is being retained in your cells and uh, you're going to have that edema. Remember, you also have a condition where if your liver is not able to produce as much of albumin as possible, you are not able to retain water within the blood vessels. So it usually leak into the cells and your cells are not able to like bring that water back into the blood. So you end up having the same edema. So um, if you have edema, start querying other things and also don't leave the kidneys out of this because it, it's a major contributor. The second sign is having weak bones, bones which are brittle and they are easily breakable. This is due to insufficiencies when it comes to calcium and phosphorus which form uh, the major components of our bones. Now remember we mentioned that um, one of the functions of the kidneys is um, activation of vitamin D from inactive forms to active forms. Vitamin D helps in uh, absorption of calcium and phosphorus and as we said phosphorus and calcium forms a major part of our bones development so if you don't have vitamin d uh, you're going to have brittle bones because of not having enough of phosphorus and calcium and a fun fact in case you have dark skin okay before you get there uh, we get most of our vitamin d's from the sun the sun is a very, very good initiator of formation of uh, vitamin D in our bodies. Now, for those who are dark skinned, you require a higher exposure. So you require a higher dose of sunshine compared to those who are light skinned for the same amount of vitamin D produced. The third one is having that urea or ammonia smell coming from your breath. This is a characteristic smell that should come from uh, your urine, not your breath. Now, Remember, when you take compounds that contain nitrogen, it's broken down to form something that we call ammonia. And this ammonia is further broken down to form urea. And this urea is taken to the kidneys where now it's excreted through urine out of your body. That's why your urine smells like that. Now, in case your kidney is not or your kidneys are not able to remove that uh, urea from your body, uh, it will accumulate in the blood and you will eventually have that leaking into the breath because you see the same blood will go to the lungs for the exchange of the gases. And due to this accumulation, you're going to find that uh, that urea, that breath, is leaking into your lungs and getting out through the breath. So you might find someone smelling exactly like what urine would smell. 
Now this is due to that kidney not being able to function properly. The fourth sign is having high blood pressure. Remember, the kidneys usually control the amount of blood, the blood volume. In case you have a lot of blood because your kidney was not able to take out as much water as possible, your heart will sense that you have an increased uh, load and this load will pressure your heart to beat faster and this will increase the pressure and this is dangerous. Also, when you have less of the blood volume due to maybe dehydration or maybe your kidney was able to remove so much water from your blood, you have less of that uh, volume, you are also going to have uh, less of that blood being pumped by the same heart. So you're going to alter your blood pressure. The fifth sign is having turbid urine. Mostly, it might also be colored due to other insufficiencies of the kidney. I'm going to focus on the proteins. Now, when you have proteins in your urine, this is nothing normal. Now, remember, proteins are usually large when it comes to molecular weight and the size so they are not supposed to filter through the glomerulus through the normal process so they are supposed to remain in the blood so if you find them in urine it means that you either have high blood pressure which is pushing through uh, those proteins by force or you have um issues with your glomerulus maybe you have an inflammation there or maybe you have another condition which is not related to these kidney issues uh, we call that multiple myeloma, where you're going to find Benz Jones proteins in that urine. Now, in case you have not the Benz Jones protein, you have the other proteins. If you have that, it means that you have a defective kidney and it's high time you go get checked up. Sign number six is having pale blood. Now, remember, blood is red because of red blood cells. And we said that um, kidneys usually produce a hormone that we call erythropoietin. And this erythropoietin work is to stimulate your bone marrow to produce more of red blood cells. So in case you're, not, you're getting less of that erythropoietin, it means you're going to manufacture less of that red blood cells, meaning that you're going to have less of a red blood cell count. You're going to have low HB. And uh, this will eventually lead to anemia. There is a video I did on full hemogram or uh, complete blood count. I'll link it here. So go and check the parameters that concern the red blood cells. You're going to see the normal and the, ab the abnormal. So just go and get some more information about red blood cells there. So if you have insufficient erythropoietin, it means that uh, you have an issue with your kidneys. The final one or number seven is a uremic frost. This usually happens when uh, the urea is trying to escape out of your body through the sweat, which is another way that you usually get out of the body apart from now through the urine. In case you have more of that urea in your body, uh, it means that either your kidneys are not getting rid of that through, through urine or as much of that as possible, and uh, it's forcing uh, its way out of the body through the the sweat, which is still another normal route, but you don't get as much of that urea in uh, your sweat than in urine. So you have more of that in urine than in sweat. Now, you sweat, then uh, it, is, it fetches that urea, takes it uh, to the surface of the skin, and then evaporation happens. And um, mostly, when uh, you taste that sweat, it's usually very salty because of the compounds that it's carrying. Now, you're going to remain with uh, some spots which are white. These are the crystals of the ammonia salts which are on your surface. Sometimes when you let them be, you might start getting some itchy um, sensation due to the reaction that usually follow. Now, uh, urea is safe because it has been carboxylated in the liver, but then when uh, you concentrate that on the skin, you might look whitish, uh, pale uh, due to you now the frost that you are talking about here. I hope you gained something. If you did, give us a like and also give us a subscription. And make sure you subscribe because um, the next video I'm going to do is how can you take care of your kidneys. Now that you have looked at how we hurt our kidneys, how uh, we can get to know some of the signs and symptoms, how do we get to prevent you from getting this kidney hurt? How do we treat our kidney so that it gives us the best that it can offer? We're going to do that in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed.